On the first floor landing, she said to him, this floor is mine. They climbed up to a second flight. And this one is all yours, she said. Here's your room. I do hope you like it. She took him into a small but charming front bedroom, switching on the light as she went in. The morning sun comes right in the window, Mr. Perkins. It is Mr. Perkins, isn't it? No, he said, it's Weaver. Mr. Weaver, how nice. I've put a water bottle between the sheets to air them out, Mr. Weaver. It's such a comfort to have a hot water bottle in a strange bed with clean sheets. Don't you agree? And you may light the gas fire at any time if you feel chilly. Thank you, Billy said. Thank you ever so much. He noticed that the bedspread had been taken off the bed and that the bedclothes had been neatly turned back on one side, all ready for someone to get in. I'm so glad you appeared, she said, looking earnestly into his face. I was beginning to get worried. That's all right, Billy answered brightly. You mustn't worry about me. He put his suitcase on the chair and started to open it. And what about supper, my dear? Did you manage to get anything to eat before you came here? I'm not a bit hungry, thank you, he said. I think I'll just go to bed as soon as possible because tomorrow I've got to get up rather early and report to the office. Very well then. I'll leave you now so that you can unpack. Before you go to bed, would you be kind enough to pop into the sitting room on the ground floor and sign the book? Everyone has to do that because it's the law of the land and we don't want to go breaking any laws at this stage in the proceedings, do we? She gave him a little wave of the hand and went quickly out of the room and closed the door. Now, the fact that his landlady appeared to be slightly off a rocker didn't worry Billy in the least. After all, she was not only harmless, there was no question about that, but she was also quite obviously a kind and generous soul. He guessed that she had probably lost a son in the war or something like that and had never got over it. So, <clears throat> a few minutes later, after unpacking his suitcase and washing his hands, he trotted downstairs to the ground floor and entered the living room. His landlady wasn't there, but the little fire was glowing in the hearth and the little dash hound was sleeping in front of it. The room was wonderfully warm and cosy. I'm a lucky fellow, he thought, rubbing his hands. This is a bit of all right.